Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. I'm going to be giving you my predicted 11 for Manchester United's game against Young Boys in the Champions League group stage. So I'm going to go with the 4-2-3-1 formation. In goal... David De Gea, David De Gea has been in goal for our first four league games. De Gea was in goal against Newcastle on Saturday, didn't really have much to do, made a close range save to deny Jolinton. Couldn't do anything about Mankio's equaliser. We know De Gea is staying at Manchester United for this season. Because earlier on in the summer, he said that De Gea decided to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for a starting place. And De Gea said he's determined to fight for his Man United future. This season is De Gea's 11th season. He's endured 10 years at Man United. He's been a long servant. He's been with us since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. De Gea has made mistakes in the last couple of years. A few years ago, he was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. He's won everything domestically at the football club. And he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. De Gea has two years left on his contract and he's on £375,000 a week. At right back, I'm going to go with Diego Dalot. I want him to come in for Anwan Basaka. Anwan Basaka was very poor against Newcastle on Saturday. He was wasteful in possession on occasions. His crossing was very poor. And he made a number of mistakes defensively. So I think we need to rest Anwan Basaka for this game against Young Boys and give Diego the lot. The opportunity. Diego Delot is our second choice right back. Last season, Diego Delot was out on loan with AC Milan. We got Diego Delot three years ago from Porto. We got him for 19 million. I think there's a good chance that Diego Delot will leave Manchester United next year. Uh, when the summer transfer window was open, it said Borussia Dortmund were in talks to sign Diego Delot. They were interested in a loan with an option to buy next summer. And two other teams, I think, were in for Diego Delot. But it did say towards the end of the summer transfer window that Diego Delot is going to be staying at Man United. The two centre-halves, Raphael Varane and Harry Maguire. Raphael Varane did very well on his home debut against Newcastle on Saturday. I thought he was well composed, he was very effective in the air. And he was unlucky not to score from that diving header from the corner. Varane also did very well. On his debut against Wolves. You know, made some key clearances. And brought the ball out well from the back. Varane to Manchester United was official just before kick-off against Leeds on the opening day. We got Varane in a deal worth £41 million. With add-ons included. 
We paid £34 million up front. Varane signed a four-year contract with Man United with an option of a fifth year. Varane got given the number 19 shirt. But Varane is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a very good pedigree as a player. He won a lot of trophies when he was at Real Madrid. Varane did endure 10 years with Real Madrid. Um, Harry Maguire... I don't think he was brilliant against Newcastle on Saturday. Like I said, he was the main culprit for Newcastle's equalising goal because he switched off. Maguire has had his good games at Man United. He's had his bad games. But like I've mentioned, we should get the best out of him now with Varane alongside him. Last season, Maguire was a miss. For us, because he had ligament damage in his ankle. We overpaid for Maguire. We got him for, what, £80 million? So he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive sign at the club behind Pogba. At left-back, Luke Shaw. Uh, Luke Shaw obviously played against Newcastle on Saturday. Luke Shaw got an assist in the game. I thought in the first half against Newcastle weren't too good, but I thought he improved in the second half. Luke Shaw's enjoyed a pretty good start to this season. He was superb last season. In fact, last season, he was the best left-back in the Premier League. Luke Shaw's been our first-choice left-back for a while, and he still remains our first-choice left-back, despite the arrival of Alex Tellez. Shaw... Has had a good career at Man United despite the injuries he has sustained before. Shaw's been at Man United now for like seven years or so, so he's been a long serving player. Uh, I think we are in the process of extending his contract. Paul Popper. And Donny van der Beek in the centre midfield. Paul Pogba got two assists against Newcastle on Saturday. Pogba has got seven assists so far this season. So what a start to the season he has endured. Pogba was good in the last couple of months of last season, but at one point last season, Pogba had a thigh injury and he sustained some ankle injuries at Man United. Now, I've just given you the news on Paul Pogba on my last video. Uh, David Einstein from The Athletic has said that Pogba is leaning towards signing a new Man United contract. with the impact of Cristiano Ronaldo. Before the start of the season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract. Pogba's current contract expires next summer. Earlier on this season, it actually said Pogba is very likely to leave Man United on a free next summer. Uh, Defensive Central said the other week that Paul Popper favours Real Madrid switch over PSG deal. Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with Pogba. A report by Two O Sports said the other week that Juventus want to re-sign Pogba next summer. Pogba did enjoy four very good years with Juventus before he rejoined Man United. And before the start of the season, it actually said Pogba was set to join PSG on the free next summer because it did mention that PSG are pushing to sign him next summer. And earlier on this season, it said PSG are prepared to offer Pogba 
£510,000 a week in wages to prize him away from Man United. PSG couldn't get him in this year's summer transfer window because they got Lionel Messi. But like I say, I hope Pogba signs this new contract. Uh, this season is Pogba's sixth season at Man United since he rejoined. He's won three trophies at the club so far. We paid £89 million for him, so reflecting on that is our most expensive signing at the moment. We had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Uh, Donny van der Beek, I think he'll come in for Nemanja Matic. Van der Beek has to start this game. He should have started against Newcastle on Saturday, but he didn't. But he did come on in the game. Prior to the game against Newcastle, Solskjaer... ...said he was prepared to play Donny van der Beek in a two-man midfield. Solskjaer hints at a new role for van der Beek this term. Now, the other week, Donny van der Beek told Ole Gunnar Solskjaer his best position. Van der Beek reckons it would be best served operating as a number six or a number eight. He was predominantly a number 10 at Ajax. The other week, Van der Beek spoke about his Man United future in an exclusive interview with Rio Ferdinand. Van der Beek admitted that he's prepared to keep fighting to earn his place in the Man United team and to remain in the plans of Solskjaer. Uh, last week, Van der Beek's agent did a lot of talking he did confirm that the player held talks with Everton over the move. He also said the return of Ronaldo was bad news for Van der Beek. And he fired a warning shot to Man United saying play him in the Premier League or lose him. And his agent also said that Van der Beek will succeed at Man United and prove his doubt as Ron at Man United this season. He needs to be given more game time because he is a good player. I haven't really had much of a perception on him, though, at Man United. This is Van der Beek's second full season. Last season, he made 36 appearances in all competitions, but most of them appearances come from the bench. I recall Van der Beek starting just four games in the league last season. We got Van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025 and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Now ahead of Pogba and Van der Beek... Bruno Fernandes as the attacking midfielder. Bruno Fernandes obviously scored against Newcastle from 25 yards out. But up until the goal against Newcastle, Bruno Fernandes was pretty quiet. Fernandez got his first Manchester United hat-trick in the 5-1 win against Leeds on the opening day. Bruno Fernandez is one of our best players and he's one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Fernandez has been at Man United now almost two years. In most of his games at Man United, he's been very consistent. There has been a few games, though, where he has looked off the pace. Bruno Fernandes does not want to leave the club. He's already made that clear. He's happy to stay at Old Trafford as contract talks go on. Solskjaer wants a new contract for Fernandes. Fernandes has got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year. We've got Fernandes back in January 2020 from Sporting Lisbon. 
last season he won play of the year and he's won play of the month quite a few times reflecting on his good performances on I'm going to go with Jesse Lingard as the left midfielder I think Jesse Lingard will come in for Jaden Sancho on the left obviously Sancho played on the left against Newcastle on Saturday Jesse Lingard scored against Newcastle on Saturday came off the bench There's a very good chance that Jesse Lingard's going to leave Manchester United in January. Uh, Man United set Jesse Lingard cut price fee. We want £12 million for him ahead of the January transfer window. The other week, Jesse Lingard rejected a new Man United contract offer over playing time concerns despite him being in the last year of his deal in the summer transfer window Lingard snubbed the return to West Ham last season Lingard did endure a four month loan spell with West Ham and he made an impact earlier on this season Solskjaer did confirm that Lingard remains part of his plans despite that ongoing speculation uh, going to go with Mason Greenwood on the right of midfield Mason Greenwood played against Newcastle on Saturday Played well. Obviously, Ronaldo's first goal, Mason Greenwood played a part because Greenwood had the shot. Uh, Newcastle's goalkeeper, Woodman, spilled it and Ronaldo got the rebound. Greenwood's enjoyed a good start to this season. He's got three goals so far this season. Greenwood's been an absolute revelation since he broke into our senior squad, but at one point he did go a while without scoring. Greenwood made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven, so he's been part of the club for a long time, and last season Greenwood signed a new four-year contract. He deserved a new contract, reflecting on his good performances. And I'm going to go with Ronaldo as the centre forward. Ronaldo scored twice on his second debut on Saturday. Solskjaer says it's not impossible to leave Ronaldo out of the team. Solskjaer insists that he doesn't have to play Ronaldo in every game. Ronaldo says we can win the Champions League ahead of this game against Young Boys. Cristiano Ronaldo has hinted that he's looking to stay at Manchester United beyond his current contract. Ronaldo signed a two-year contract with Man United with an option of a third year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Old Trafford. We got Ronaldo for £19.8 with add-ons included. Ronaldo is wearing the number 7 shirt. And the other week, Ronaldo completed his medical. 
Don't forget Ronaldo gave a speech to his Man United teammates on his return and Ronaldo told his Man United teammates that he wants the Premier League this season. When Ronaldo officially re-signed, he gave his first interview and he said, I'm very happy to be back home after 12 years. Ronaldo became the all-time international top scorer with two late goals against Ireland. Ronaldo was our final signing of the summer transfer window and I can assure he's going to do really well in his second spell at Man United despite him being the age of 36. Ronaldo is the greatest player of all time. He's won 32 major trophies in his playing career including five Ballon Doors. And Ronaldo was superb in his first spell at Man United. So yeah, that's how I think Man United could line up against young boys. Um, obviously Dean Henderson, he's not available, but I think he has travelled. Dean Henderson obviously has been recovering from COVID. Um, Alex Tellez is unavailable. Marcus Rashford is out with a shoulder injury. He's out until October. Earlier on in the summer, Rashford decided to have surgery on his shoulder. Um, Edison Cavani, he's absent. Don't forget, he recently got given the number 21 shirt. And that's about it. Um, McTominay has had a groin injury, but he's now back. So there. Now, young boys, they won the Swiss Super League last season for the 15th time. And they've won six Swiss Cups. Young boys are fourth in the Swiss Super League. Young, the manager of Young Boys is David Wagner. Before Young Boys, he managed Schalke, he managed Huddersfield, and he's managed Borussia Dortmund's reserve team before. Now, obviously, these are some of Young's, Young Boy's players. Obviously, they've got Gene Pierre Ensame. He's actually been out with injury. They've got that Wilfred Kanga. He's one of their forwards. They've got Meschak Ella. He's a forward. Felix Mambimbi. He's a forward. They've got Mohamed Ali Kamara, Marvin Spielman, Fabian Lustenberger. Um, he's one of their defenders. He's actually been out with injury. Jordan Lifort. He's one of their defenders. He's been out with injury. Monterio. He's one of their forwards. Garcia, one of their defenders. Christopher Martin's one of their midfielders. So that is a lot of the players that young boys have got. The last time we played young boys was back in 2018. We beat them 1-0. I'm expecting Manchester United to get to the knockout stages of the Champions League because we haven't got an hard group. The toughest team in our group is Villarreal. Uh, we also have Atlanta in our group. Um, I presume Solskjaer will be doing a press conference ahead of this game, so I will be giving you my reaction to that when he's done it. Our next league game is West Ham on Sunday. 
But, you know, we've enjoyed a very good start to the season. You know, we're top of the Premier League at the moment. We've won three games out of four. And I am expecting Man United to enjoy a very good season. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.